Ladies and gentlemen, John Tron here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Scott the Waz. Ladies and gentlemen, your boy Caddy. Ladies and gentlemen, Shady Turbo here, and today we're going back in time to the world before Facebook, the world before COVID 19, the world before my dad left. Aww. We're looking at Mario Kart Double Dash. Released in mid-November of 2003, although with varying dates depending on where you are across the world, released a game which was one that actually made me fall in love for the series. Frankly, it was one of the first few racing games I played, only being beaten by Crush Team Racing for the PS1. And it's safe to say, I loved it. I bought and played it at every single one in the series. I even have the Wii U version of Mario Kart 8. Plus Double Dash still has a unique concept that they've never gone back to as of release of this video. Two characters, one car. The idea of doubling up the characters on each vehicle is one that actually doesn't add all that much. And yet, it's such a nice feature and it adds some interesting depth to the game. I'll talk a bit more about that later. So, playing Mario Kart Double Dash in 2020. What does that actually entail? Well, of course, you still have the original GameCube, so you can plug that into a nice CRT and play it in its original glory. Or, another option is to use a Wii, but the issue is, it's the lack of HDMI ports out those tickets, and playing those on modern TVs just isn't practical. And that brings me to my second option. Oh wait, that's my third, this script makes no fucking sense. Uh, this brings me to my third option. The Wii U. But Shady, you dumbass, so that can't play GameCube games. Well, yes, you are right, you stupid twat, in that straight out the gate it cannot play GameCube games. But with some surprisingly easy software modding of the system, it can actually run GameCube games natively. All you need is an SD card and a way to read it on your PC and then you're good to go. So, the reason why this piece of shit system we call a Wii U can run the game natively is because it's essentially just a Wii itself. Ooh! And because the Wii can run GameCube games natively. All the homebrew application needs to do is turn on a switch saying, yes, run these games. And then it runs them perfectly. Only issue is, of course, is it can't actually read the GameCube discs itself. So you need to find a way of ripping it yourself. But this still isn't good enough for me, for I am a man of high critique. Hence, why I only play the greatest games of all time, such as the phenomenal Shrek 2. 10 out of 10 out of- Nobody wants to see me hungry. Why don't we just get some parfaits? And due to an amazing piece of software, we're able to do such a thing. We have the Dolphin Emulator. I'm sure most people are familiar with it, so I'll explain it simply. Dolphin allows emulation of GameCube games and Wii games. The software itself is legal because it doesn't actually use anything copyrighted from the systems. And frankly, it's fucking magic. The best thing about the emulator is the ability to upscale games. So anything that may have aged poorly due to a low resolution can now become works of art. That's the method we'll be using today. Dolphin with a PS4 DualShock controller running on my PC. So, let's delve right in. Lucado has never looked so damn fine, ooh mama. So, to play this game fairly, I figured 100cc was the way to go. 50cc is the pussy shit, 150cc makes me the pussy shit. So, starting off this game, you have a roster of 16 characters, and frankly, they're the important ones anyway. We have Mario, Luigi, Princesses, Dick Sucker, Two Little Kids, the variance is huge. And of course, how can I not go with the people's champion, Waluigi? Wah! So, funny enough, you actually only start with three Grand Prix in this one. I almost forgot how little amount there were. You can unlock a fourth one, but that's actually it. 16 compared to the 32 tracks in Mario Kart Wii, plus including the DLC, 46 in Mario Kart 8, it really does feel like a tiny game in comparison. But do just take a moment to appreciate these graphics, this move frame rate, Everything about this looks surprisingly great. Simple upscaling of games can really go a long way. And the frame rate doesn't even have anything to do with it. Even on its original hardware of the GameCube, the game runs at a solid 60 FPS. Even while playing with 4 people on one system. And to be honest, it's pretty incredible. Especially when you take into consideration how low games, even today, actually do hit 60 FPS. 
So there's a few things out the gate, which makes this game stand out from its sequels. The two characters means that they do actually hold a weapon each, something which wasn't even brought back until the most very recent entry for the Nintendo Switch. But I actually think the Switch game implements it so much worse. But I'm going to be doing a separate video on Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on it. Wink. The other thing that's major and unique to this game is the special items. Each character set has their own unique special weapon, which they have a chance of getting out of the item boxes. For example, Diddy Kong and Donkey Kong has this huge fucking banana, which they can throw and fuck shit up, taking up way much more space. And honestly, it's so much harder to dodge, and there's actually something really fun about it. It's a really nice idea, and I, and I genuinely wish that they brought it back. That's a happy cloud. And can we just talk about these goddamn fake boxes? They aren't even in the new games, and holy shit, it messed me up. My brain can't drive around them. I automatically think, ooh, box, and go straight into it. It's stupid. I love it. Miyamoto, give me that back, you merry prankster. Now, the issue I have with this game mostly comes from controls, but I think it mostly just stems from the fact that Mario Kart controls very differently these days. Firstly, I have absolutely no idea how the beginning charge actually works. Throughout the entire session, I still couldn't figure it out properly. What the fuck do I go now? Do I go then? When do I go? What do you want from me? Only just now, I had to look at this WikiHow article to figure it out. WikiHow. <laughs> Fucking WikiHow. I really have gone back in time. And other than that, the steering is, is really hard. I don't know exactly what they changed, but I think it's mostly just the control you have when you're actually drifting. But I cannot get the full swing of this. It's impossible. After years of modern Mario Kart games, I just cannot get my head around it. But here's the key thing. Every time I did lose, I felt like it was because I was bad. It was never, or at least the very least... What? Did I just write? <laughs> Not often. Due to bad RNG because of weapons. Yes, sometimes it happened where I'd get hit with weapons and I'd lose my place. But I always felt like I had a chance to catch back up. The balance in this game is honestly second to none, which I feel like it's something that modern Mario Kart have lost a bit. There seems to be way less shells, way way less thunder, and when I crash into objects such as bananas or fake boxes, I know that's on me. As opposed to constant lightning, constant shells up your ass and get boomeranged. Fuck you boomerang. There's far less of that, and to me that's an amazing thing. Now, I'm sure some of this is nostalgia, but the levels here are so so good. Most of my favorites are actually in this game. I feel like there's so many iconic tracks here that have their own unique personality, that they've really stood the test of time. Hell, some of these are even in the latest entries as remade levels. So even if you've never touched this game before, you probably recognize a few of them. My personal favorites are Peaches Beaches, hey, my man. Driving along the beach with whatever the fuck these things are, with the tide coming in and out, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. it's so simple, but it adds a nice touch. You need a plan around it, and you have to drive differently due to it. And I feel like that's common across the game too. Dry Dry Desert has this huge sinking pit. Do you go around it and play it safe, or do you cut across, taking a risk since you can fall in and it'll slow you down? It's amazing. And Mushroom Bridge, dodging around the vehicles, changing your path completely. It's, it's just phenomenal. I love it. 10 out of 10. Give me more, please. I sucked at this one, so I actually came back with Luigi and his baby friend. It's innocent because I can't sweat, please don't arrest me. As somebody who came into this game, after not having played it for so long, 100cc actually did seem like the perfect balance of difficulty and not getting too frustrated. Whereas I did unlock a special cup, so I did try that one out on 150cc. And it's safe to say, I was fucking shit at it. Oh, it's so much quicker. Oh my god. Oh, what the hell was that? Check it out, alright, I'm gonna go boom. Flash. Yeah, that's what I meant to do. This is where the downsides actually did come into play. It's so hard to actually be precise in this game that it does sometimes feel like you're battling against it. Trying to drift around objects, but it just feels impossible. Going around the corners and flying off the ledge, trying to figure out where did you go wrong in life. Even some of the special objects sucked in 150. I used this chain shop only for it to do far more bad than good. How was this helping? So after the Grand Prix, I quickly checked out the time trial too. Not too much to say. It's basically how it's always been. Your race, set a time, then your race against your ghost to try and beat the time. Woo! And battle mode. I was actually looking forward to trying out battle mode, but for some fucking reason, you can only play it on multiplayer with other people. And I would have loved to have given it a go, but I can't. 
I'm lonely. It's, 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 it's not my fault. So as a single player experience, all you can do is drive around 16 courses and do time trials on the same courses. And frankly, that really isn't enough. The courses are iconic, and frankly, the graphics do look great in HD. And to be honest, somebody could have told me that it's the Wii U game, and I wouldn't have been able to tell. But I don't know if that's in credit to the GameCube or in shame of the Wii. But in terms of actual content in this game, it's seriously lacking. Mario Kart has always been a case of limitation, but at least in later games, it literally doubled the amount of tracks it had in it. And even that helped a lot. Heck, I don't know how many of you have played it, but Mario Kart DS had a freaking story mode. A STORY MODE! So while the GameCube edition really did help lay a foundation of what was to come, and it was a huge step up from the Nintendo 64 edition, I mean just look at those graphics. It really can't help but feel like it's a major case of nostalgia though, but sometimes that's okay. So while I think it's worth maybe checking out and spending an evening or two having a kick out of the nostalgia, otherwise it's just a little hard to actually encourage playing this game in 2020, especially compared to the Wii edition. You can even plug your GameCube controller into your Wii and play it that way. And frankly, you probably have a, a more enjoyable time for longer. But I will actually say as a final note, as somebody who's played it as a younger brother at the time, I did absolutely love it. The multiplayer actually allows you to work as a team on one car. Someone could throw the weapons while the other person drives. And frankly, it worked so well. So if you're looking for a game for your annoying little brother to play with you, where he actually doesn't do jack shit, maybe give it a go. But otherwise, I feel like it's worth leaving to the nostalgia part inside all of us. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been my first video in this sort of style, so if you did enjoy it, be sure to give me a like, drop a comment, let them know, and maybe about any other games you'd want me to look back upon. I actually had a blast making this, and I'd hopefully you enjoyed watching it too. But uh, I hope you all have a wonderful evening, and I'm going to catch you another time, alright? See you later, bye-bye!